Hi, it's Steph, and we're at Walmart, and they've received all of their spring-planted summer blooming bulbs, as well as bare root fruit trees and even bare root shrubs. So let's go ahead and take a look at the March inventory at Walmart. I'm already seeing so many different varieties that we haven't seen yet over at the Home Depot in Lowe's. So it's good to know that Walmart has some good options and some different selections. Starting with this Aquilegia or Columbine. This is a plant that prefers part shade and it is perennial. These are bare root plants, which is a really affordable way to grow your garden. And it looks like you're getting six roots for $11.47. This variety is called Blue Barlow. It looks like a really pretty double roughly purple variety. And it says here, plant in full sun blooms early summer excellent for cut flower and deer resistant which is always a bonus and it is pollinator friendly let's see how tall this variety gets it doesn't say the height um, it, but it will tell you the spacing in some planting directions actually right here 24 to 36 inches in height so that's a really pretty one and then right on the side of it there's another variety of aquilegia or columbine and here you get eight roots or eight bare root plants for 11.47 and it looks like it's a mix and also blooms early summer excellent for cut flowers and deer resistant it's a pretty one this is a really pretty um, late spring early summer blooming perennial some butterfly weed this is also really easily started from seed, but here you're getting some bare root plants and you get 11 for 11, six roots for 11.47. Full sun, blooms in summer, excellent cut flower. And Crocosmia, this is one that I have not seen sold as a bare root ever before. So this is a new variety, which is really interesting. And this is a pollinator magnet. The hummingbirds love these because they have uh, red blooms, which they're attracted to, and tubular shaped flowers. And this variety is Lucifer, it says plant in full sun to partial shade, blooms in summer, perfect for containers. And these are plants that have very strappy green foliage. So even when they're not in bloom, you get those really tall green blades that almost looks it look makes it look like an ornamental type grass. So that is not what we're looking for. That Someone must have put that in here. That's a canna, which we'll look at eventually. But let's see. With the Crocosmia here, you're getting 25 bulbs for $11.47. Some begonias. And these like part shade. It says plant in partial to full shade. They're beautiful though. Really roughly pretty flower. Great for a hanging basket. Looks like you get three bulbs for $5.42. And look at this one, Picotty Pink and White. That's a real pretty one. These are annuals. So when we're looking at these bare roots, there's a difference. Annuals are ones that will grow this year but not return for you next year. So as soon as you get your first frost, this will be done. Unless you bring it inside and overwinter the bulbs, which you can do. You can lift them from your pot, dry them out, put them in a paper bag and keep them in a dark, cool spot and then plant them again next year. So you can certainly do that. Where perennials, you would plant the bare root in the ground and they can overwinter and they'll come back for you the following season. So here we're getting into a few of the annual varieties. And this here is Caladium, a beautiful shade plant that offers a lot of interest and color with its foliage. So this variety here is called, let's see, Carolyn Wharton. And it looks like it's a green and pink mix with some pink veining. It says plant in partial to full shade and it is perfect for containers. I actually grew some in containers last year. This variety here, the white variety, and it says it's called Candidum, but it was gorgeous and it offers a little bright spot in a shady corner. I had it in a pot that was blue and it just was beautiful. They have really large leaves and this white was just so bright. So you're getting five bulbs for 542. And what I did was I planted all five in one pot. I wanna say it was about a 10 inch pot and it turned out beautifully. I'm actually trying to see if they'll come back. I brought my pot in at the end of the season and I'm hoping that they'll come back for me. So this here is a mix, a Caladium mix. Again, five bulbs for 542. So great option for a container in a shady spot. And some cannas. So if you want more of a tropical vibe in your garden, um, cannas are a great option. They have this really big green foliage. It's really tropical looking with these bright blooms. And they come in lots of shades. There's orange and corals, reds and yellows, but really pretty. This one is called Canna President, and it's an annual plant in full sun, bloom summer through fall. So usually annuals will bloom until you get your first frost. A pretty one and then this one here has really pretty foliage 
Look at that. It's almost like a striped or variegated foliage. And this one is, let's see, it's called Canna Pretoria. Now these get pretty tall. Let's see how big this one gets. 36 to 48 inches, so three to four feet in height. And now these bulbs, even though you're seeing here at the garden centers and nurseries, you're finding these bare root bulbs, they cannot be planted out, most of them, until the danger of your last frost has passed. So for us here in my zone six, that's usually at the um, end of April, beginning of May. For me, it's not safe to plant anything out until beginning of May, to be honest. And so you want to know that. So anything that's perennial, as soon as the ground is workable, you can go ahead and plant them. But anything that is an annual that is not cold tolerant, like cannas or Palladiums, you would want to wait until your last frost date before you bring those and plant them outside in a container or in ground. So here we have some more perennials and this is a stilby. Now a stilby grows wonderfully from bare roots. I actually have quite a few in my garden and I really like them. So this variety is called Red Sentinel and they have really ferny foliage and they send up these really colorful blooms. They do well in a soil that stays um, partially moist but well draining and they do like part sun. I have some friends who have some in more sun but mine are kind of under the canopy of my magnolia tree and they do wonderful. They also like to be fertilized so in this spring you'd go ahead and side dress them with some all-purpose fertilizer and they'll send up those beautiful plume uh, blooms for you. So these get to be 18 to 24 inches in height and you're getting two roots for 542. And then there is the Sunny Boy, which this variety I have in my garden. It's a purple variety, really pretty. Let's see how big the Sunny Boy gets. So a Stilby Sunny Boy plant in partial to full shade, blooms in summer and great for borders and it is deer resistant. And I can say that it is deer resistant in my garden. So this one gets 18 to 24 inches in height. Two roots for 542. Um, I have to tell you that the prices are similar to what they have been in recent years. So. It's good to know that they really haven't gone up much um, in terms of these bare root plants. And this one here is called Chocolate Kiss, another really pretty light pink variety. Plant in partial to full shade, blooms in summer. So these like shade, they definitely like a moderately moist, well-draining soil and to be fertilized and then you will enjoy these beautiful plumes. I absolutely love it still be. I have quite a few in my garden. Some more Aquilegia or Columbine. This one you get three roots for 542. So these packages are a little small. So if you have a smaller garden or don't quite need all of the roots that we saw in those larger packages, you can get one of these with only three for 542. And then Bleeding Hearts. Oh, I absolutely love the white ones. Now these, if you're not familiar, are called Bleeding Hearts because the bloom looks like a small heart that's bleeding. But these are also another shade plant. They are, I want to say mid-spring or late spring. Oh, it says early summer. So yeah, later spring to early summer. And this variety is called Alba, the white one. And it has green foliage. There are some varieties that even have gold foliage with pink blooms that is really pretty as well. Pollinator friendly, and you get two roots for 542. And then they have this variety here that is uh, one that has more of a tighter fern type foliage. And then the flowers are more upright so the style is a little bit different they're both bleeding hearts or dicentra this one has more of a weeping habit with the blooms and this one has more of an upright habit with a fern foliage and this one is called luxuriant you also get two roots for 542 and these are deer resistant the deer do not touch them in my garden and here is the pink variety which is beautiful and here you can see the heart shapes a bit more and you're getting two roots for 542 of the Bleeding Heart Pink. All right, quite a few more perennials here. This is so exciting. Some ferns. Now I've grown some of these in my garden before. Um, I have Christmas ferns and cinnamon ferns it, up back in the woodland area, and these get pretty large, so you wanna have some space. Ferns are great for woodland settings and for shade gardens. So here they have this one. It says plant in partial to full shade, and it gets summer through fall foliage. When they come up from the ground, they have these cute little curl um, type blooms they're not really blooms, but they come out looking like little curls and then they start to unfurl, so really cool. So the Christmas variety they have, the cinnamon fern and the Tennessee ostrich fern. Look how pretty these are. They look like they're a little bit tighter in texture. And they're all two roots for 542. Now let's see how big the Tennessee fern gets. This one here gets to be 48 to 60 inches in height. So these are quite large. So you will need some space. 
So like I said, a woodland area where you have lots of trees, this might be a great option to plant underneath and some sea holly or uh, uringium. These are so cool. I actually grew mine from bare roots, some that I have in my pollinator bed, and they've done wonderfully. They can get pretty tall, so they do require some staking. They are very spiky, okay? So they feel sort of like a thistle, and um, so that's just something to know. They've poked me quite a few times, but they're beautiful, so I let them have it. All right, so let's see. This one gets to be 24 to 36 inches in height, and it blooms in summer. I also find this to be deer resistant in my garden. Pollinator friendly. Three roots for 542. Some lilies. Now, lilies are one that as soon as the ground is workable, you can go ahead and plant them in the garden. You don't have to wait until your last frost. Um, they're pretty hardy. You can go ahead and plant them, and they're also perennial. So this variety is called Lily Easy Sport. Plant in full sun, blooms in summer, and excellent for cut flowers. It's a pretty white one with some burgundy speckling in the center. And then this one is one that I have in my garden. It gets pretty tall, but it is stunning. This is called the Lily Casablanca. These are also very fragrant. It says plant in full sun to partial shade blooms in summer. Four bulbs for 542. And this one gets to be, let's see, 38 to 50 inches in height. The Lily Double Tiger Orange. This one is a very traditional tiger lily. You get 542, you get three bulbs. And they're also pretty tall at 36 to 48 inches in height. And this red one here is called Dolly Madison. It's a pretty red one. Four bulbs for 542. Fragrant blooms, blooms in summer. Plant in full sun to partial shade. And let's see what else they've got here some peonies and these are always a good buy at 542 for one this variety here is the margaret margaret truman and it looks like a pretty fuchsia pink now peonies are one that could take up to three years for you to get a significant number of blooms from a bare root but these are heirloom type plants they live for years and years so if you want to save some money plant them from bare root and in a couple years they'll become established and will reward you with beautiful roughly and fragrant blooms so here you get one tuber for 542 and they also have this variety called Festiva Maxima, which is a really pretty white one with a little bit of red in the center. It says plant in full sun to partial shade blooms spring through summer. Now the herbaceous peonies, which or peonies, which are these here, the herbaceous ones do require a little bit of staking. So um, once they get large enough, they um, get heavy because of the blooms, right? So you should stake them so that you can make sure that the blooms aren't on the floor and you get to enjoy them. But they are so worth it because they're stunning. And check out this gorgeous one called Felix Krauss. It's a red variety. So pretty. 542 for one root. These make excellent cut flowers too. For me, peonies bloom in June. And um, sometimes you'll see ants on them. And what they're doing is feeding on the nectar that comes out of the peony. So right before they open, you'll start seeing ants. So don't worry. It's totally normal. I have this one in my garden too. The... Um, bowl of beauty and this one's a little bit different style where it just has the single petals on the outside and then the cream in the middle looks sort of like an anemone real pretty 542 one root and then they also have hollyhocks now hollyhocks are typically um, a biennial which means they will bloom um, on year two these are bare root they might bloom for you in year one they're a quintessential cottage garden flower the one problem that sometimes hollyhocks have is that the foliage can get some rust on them just about the time where they start to bloom which can be a little frustrating but they are beautiful really tall plants let's see if the package will give us the height so you're getting three roots for 542 and they get to be 30, uh, 48 to 72 inches in height. So really tall, pretty flower. So you'd want to plant these in the back of a border. And some more lilies. And this is a mixed bunch of different colors. The bold mix. You get four bulbs for 542. The really great perennial is Liatris, also known as Gay Feather. And this is the most common variety, the spicata. It is a tall lavender purple pink type bloom with a strappy grass foliage. They bloom for me at some point in July and the pollinators absolutely love them. They sort of have like a fuzzy texture to them and you're getting uh, 16 roots for 542. Now these roots are like little bulbs and you don't want to space out those 16 all far from like and apart from each other. What you would want to do is maybe group them in four groups of four or you know three groups of five and then just throw an extra one somewhere so that you'll have more of an impact in a larger group a bit faster. 
And Nephophia, also known as Red Hot Poker, is another really pretty tall perennial with these uh, spiky blooms that have a grassy foliage. So even when they're not in bloom, they look like you have a clump of ornamental grass. You're getting three roots for 542. And they get to be, the bloom spike gets to be 24 to 48 inches in height. So some really good varieties here at Walmart. Uh, and look at these beauties. Some papaver or oriental poppies these are perennial type poppies so let's so this here is the papaver orientalis red so it's a really pretty red poppy they are ruffly and they have those um, almost black looking specks in the center there you get three roots for 542 it says plant in full sun blooms in summer great for borders and they are deer resistant i have a variety called royal wedding which is a white variety in my garden and the deer did not touch them so that is always good when you deal with deer and rabbit bit pressure and this is a pretty mixed variety and it looks like you get a peach which I've grown a peach one in the past and the white one that I was talking about as well as a red mix looks like a red orange so that's a really pretty one plant in full sun and these will bloom at some point in late spring spring, um, early summer, and then they will die back, but you'll still have that clump of foliage at the bottom. See how tall they get. 18 to 36 inches in height. Some day lilies, and this variety here is called El Desperado, and it looks like a creamy or buttery yellow with some red. Now day lilies also have a strappy green foliage at the bottom. These are like deer candy, so if you do deal with a lot of deer, you'd have to be careful. You'd have to spray the buds in order to keep the deer away. But you're getting two roots for 542. These are also prolific growers. They will multiply, and then you'll have so many that you'll have to keep dividing them. So really prolific perennial. And look at this beauty, Echinacea or Coneflower one of my favorites in my garden and here you're getting the butterfly mix which looks like a colorful mix similar to what you would see with the Cheyenne spirit where you get multiple colors and you get three roots for 542 it's a perennial plant in full Sun blooms in summer pollinator friendly now this coneflower variety gets to be 24 to 36 inches which most of the coneflower I have in my garden do stay in the 24 to 36 inch height with the exception of the um, native variety the echinacea purpurea which gets much taller something to note about echinacea or coneflower is that they do not tolerate wet soggy soil it will rot the crown of the plant so you definitely want to have a soil that is well draining and they're actually quite drought tolerant once they are established Stelladora, which is the most traditional um, day lily variety that you will find. This actually looks really pretty if you couple it with purple plants like salvia and even nepeta, so um, catmint. So they are pretty in a border, low maintenance, very low maintenance with the exception of having to spray them for deer. And this variety is called Pardon Me, and it's a red variety. Now with daylilies, there are varieties that bloom at different times. There's early, mid-season, and late-season bloomers. And there's also many different heights. Like this one here, for example, is 16 to 24 inches in height. So it'd be great for the, uh, I would say, middle or second layer of your border. The Stelladora, I think, is a little bit shorter, if I recall correctly, at 10 to 24 inches in height. Let's look at some dahlias that they have in stock. This one is called Duet, and dahlias are annuals. So if you live in a colder climate, like I'm in a zone six, for example, dahlias are annuals, they will grow in the summer, and then I can lift the tubers, store them over winter, and then plant them out again in the following spring. So currently my dahlias are asleep and in storage, and at some point in May, I will go ahead and plant them out. So that is something you should know if you decide to grow dahlias. You can either grow them as an annual, or you can lift the tubers after your first frost and store them and plant them year after year. So here you're getting two bulbs of this variety, the Duet for 542. Looks like it's a red with some white tips, very pretty. Plant them in full sun. They're also quite tall. Most varieties are pretty tall and will require staking. This one is 24 to 36 inches in height. Here's a variety called a border mix. So that leads me to believe they're going to be a little bit shorter. So let's see. And the border mix here says it's an annual plant in full sun, blooms summer through fall. Now these will start blooming for you later in the summer. So at some point in mid to late July, all the way until your last frost date. This one here is 12 to 18 inches. So it is a perfect front of the border little dahlia. And it's a mix, so you'll get different colors. Here's a pretty peachy type dahlia with a little bit of yellow in the center. It's also one of those, what they call the cactus style dahlias, the spiky ones here, and it is called Dahlia Motto. 
and you get two bulbs for 542 and this one here is 36 to 48 inches in height so a bit taller so what happens if you don't stake these is if you get a lot of wind because the blooms on most of these dinner plate size are so large it can snap your stem and then you won't get any blooms so that's why it's important this one here is called lucky number i've grown it before it's a bit lighter pink in my garden and you get two bulbs for 542. this one is 36 to 48 inches in height And this beauty, I have grown the Lavender Perfection, a really pretty light pink with a hint of purple, two bulbs for 542. These like full sun. They can handle a little bit of afternoon shade though. Some elephant ears. Now these are a huge foliage plant. They have these really large heart-shaped leaves that are really interesting. These look really pretty on a patio or even by a pool and very easy to grow. They look like these big old, they're actually like a variety of taro root. And what you would do is you would plant them. Let's see which side. This side goes up. Where you see the tag, there's usually a little eye in the center, and that's the side that you will plant them. And you plant these in your soil. They will not start growing until it gets pretty warm, but let's see how much these are. One bulb is 542, and these are the jumbo. These are pretty big corms or bulbs. You can also overwinter these, lift them at the end of the season. Again, put them in a paper grocery bag, keep them dry and cool in a dark spot, and then you can plant them again next year. There's also a smaller variety here that looks like the package got moved from somewhere else. Um, let's see, so this one just says elephant ear. You can see that the bulbs are much smaller on these, so you'll get much bigger leaves and a much bigger plant off of those. And I wanna say they're about four to five feet in height, so they get pretty large. Some freesia, it looks like these might be good to grow in a container. It says plant in full sun to partial shade, bloom summer, fragrant blooms. I've never grown freesia before. You're gonna get 20 bulbs for 542 some more cannas and these here are orange and there's some red ones but what's really interesting about these is that instead of the standard green foliage you're getting some dark foliage which is really pretty so this variety is called wyoming and red king humbert and both varieties here are 542 for three bulbs a couple more dahlia varieties here is a really popular yellow one this is called the kelvin floodlight it's a really pretty large yellow dinner plate sized dahlia and it likes full sun blooms summer through fall large blooms excellent for cut flowers two bulbs for 542. And then this variety here I've also grown before. It's the Ferncliff Illusion. It's a really beautiful white with lavender and a little bit of yellow or golden color in the center. It's a big one. It's like a dinner plate size as well. And Ferncliff Illusion, two bulbs, 542. Now when you're looking at these, you wanna kind of inspect the bulbs, um, look around to see for signs of growth. Like this one you can see here already has some shoots coming up, but you don't wanna plant these quite yet. So keep them in a dark spot cool spot with a you know like a paper bag so that you can't let light in to keep them a bit more dormant until you're ready to plant them out you want to check for weight make sure that they're not too dehydrated check the bulb the tuber rather to make sure it's nice and firm and then you know that you have a decent tuber they'll be likely to produce blooms for you this one here is called electric flash and look at that it's another cactus type bloom with um, this hot pink and some yellow really bright and some geranium. Geraniums are wonderful. They also like part shade. They bloom in early summer and they're deer resistant. I can vouch for that. I have some in my garden um, and they do not touch them. These are the larger packages. These are perennial. You're getting three of them for $11.47 and it looks like it's a mixed color blend. Perennials return year after year. And then another classic perennial that is a beauty and a pollinator magnet, Rudbeckia, also known as Black-Eyed Susan, although the center is more brown. So I would think that it would be called Brown-Eyed Susan. Who knows? Either way, they're beautiful. And they have this really gorgeous golden bloom. This variety is called Goldsturm, which is a really um, sturdy variety. It gets to be 24 to 36 inches in height. And these bloom for me, it says late summer. So sometime at the end of July, beginning of August, these will be in full bloom in my garden. You get six roots for 1147. These also grow prolifically. So after several years, about two to three years later, you can divide these and you can have a bunch more plants to either keep and transplant in your garden 
or share with friends. Some phlox, another really beautiful garden perennial. This is a classic one. Um, phlox, the biggest issue that they have is sometimes the leaves on the older varieties are prone to powdery mildew, but you can help that by increasing airflow by planting or spacing your plants appropriately. So if you give them enough space um, and don't crowd them too much, that can avoid some of the issues with the powdery mildew. So you get six roots for $11.47. This is a mix, plant in full sun to partial shade, blooms in summer. And this phlox gets to be 24 to 36 inches in height. And it says to space them 18 to 24 inches apart. Another pretty option for the Liatris is this purple and white blend. Look at that. And you're getting 30 roots for 1147. So here you can do like six groups of five or five groups of six and uh, plant them out that way, but really pretty. Let's see how tall these get. 24 to 36 inches in height and they bloom in the summer. Space them 12 to 15 inches. So I would do a clump and then space them about 15 inches apart. The variety here is really amazing. I have never seen bare root hookahs. Um, I have seen Echinacea purpurea, but here are some other new varieties that I have not seen offered as bare root before. Some Helenium and even Delphinium. So some really good finds today. They even have another variety of poppy here, the orange. So let's check these out. Here is another plant that I have not grown before. It says it is a perennial. It's called Marabilis jalapa. So let me know in the comments if you have any experience. They kind of look like a four o'clock or even like a uh, petunia to me. You get eight roots for 1147. Plant in full sun, blooms summer through fall, drought tolerant and deer resistant. And then here are those orange poppies. Look at that beautiful vibrant orange. This would be really pretty with say like purple blooms. Uh, it's a perennial, returns year after year. Now these also do not like to sit in water. So you need to have a soil that is um, moist, but very well draining because otherwise they can also rot at the crown, similar to coneflowers. Plant in full sun, blooms in summer, great for borders and deer resistant. Now I learned about Helenium last year because these are a late summer bloomer. So if you're looking to extend the bloom show in your garden, you wanna plant plants that bloom at different times of year. And Helenium is also drought resistant and deer resistant, which is great. Plant these in full sun. This variety here is called Morheim Beauty. Get three roots for 1147. They, get, they need spacing of 10 to 15 inches apart and they get to be 24 to 36 inches in height. And Delphinium, this is a mix. Now these are another stunning quintessential cottage garden type flower with these really long ethereal type of blooms. Look at this, they come in shades of blue and purples and pinks and even white. They're absolutely stunning. Great for cut flowers. This variety here though says that it gets to be 18 to 60 inches in height. So anywhere from a foot and a half up to five feet tall. So the taller varieties are going to need some staking so that they don't topple over and break, but it is perennial and says to plant in full sun to partial shade, blooms summer and fall, excellent cut flowers. Some Echinacea purpurea, this is the native cone flower. These get much taller than the other variety that we looked at. In my garden, they get upwards of four feet and you get six roots for 1147. They're also incredibly easy to start from seed, um, but they won't bloom the first year from seed. They usually bloom second year from seed and which is the most case, most perennials, that's how it works. Um, okay, so these get to be 24 to 48 inches in height. They like full sun and you wanna space them 18 to 24 inches apart. These are gorgeous. The bumblebees absolutely love these and so do the butterflies. And hookera, something I've never seen sold as a bare root before, but it makes sense because they go pretty dormant for me, at least in the winter. Um, they will have some leaves that need to be cleaned back at the end of winter and then they'll send out some new foliage. But these are a beautiful plant for a shady garden because they offer a lot of interest with all of the different colors that the foliage offers. They come in reds and purples and greens and even a caramel that has a bit of an orange color. They're stunning. They also are pollinator friendly because they have bloom stalks that they send up. They're about 12 to 18 inches and they look like baby's breath, so a really dainty bloom. It says to plant in full sun to partial shade. I have found that they do better in a part sun, um, part shade situation. Otherwise, some of the leaves get crispy, but there are some varieties that can take a bit more sun than others. They bloom in summer and they're perfect for containers and are deer resistant.
I do not think they're rabbit resistant though because I have had some something eating on my hookara in the past. So something to keep in mind. And you get four roots for $11.47. It is a mix, so you don't know what you'll get. But if you have a shady spot, this would be something really fun to try. On this side, they have some bare root plants. And look at these, viburnum. So at first glance, you would think that this was a type of um, hydrangea because they're very similar. But the viburnums bloom first in late spring, and then they will get followed by the hydrangeas, which will bloom for you in the summer. So very different plants that look similar in bloom style. Look at that. So this is a viburnum Japanese snowball and it's a bare root. You can see that it has some growth, which means it's viable. And then you would plant this out in your garden. It'll take a little bit of time for it to grow, but from bare root, it's a really affordable option. So look at here, you're getting one bare root plant for $6.97. And they have the Japanese snowball viburnum. They have a couple of other things down below here. They, all they have the hydrangea PG pink, which is a paniculata type hydrangea. And the difference between a paniculata and a macrophylla type hydrangea, or the mop head variety, is that these will bloom on new wood. So each year you can go in and prune these and you'll still get blooms. But with the macrophylla type, if you, bloom, if you prune them incorrectly, you could risk your blooms for that year. Those are also the ones that are a little bit finicky. If we get a late season frost, it can zap the blooms and then you won't get any blooms. Um, people also have, there's always a mystery about how to get them to stay blue. So those are a little trickier. The paniculata types are a lot easier and beginner gardener friendly. So here you're getting one root of the PG pink variety, which is a really pretty pink. Looks very similar to say the quick fire in terms of color for $6.97. Let's see how big these get. It tells you to plant them in full sun to partial shade, blooms in summer to fall, big beautiful blooms. And let's see if I can make out the um, size. No, it's a lot of text here, but I would assume that these probably need some space. I would say anywhere from maybe like four to six feet tall and wide is my best guess on this. And they have some lilac, and this is another great option to start from bare root. Some people like to do like a, high, a lilac hedge. So bare root would be a great way to go about doing that. You get one for $6.97. These are so fragrant and look so beautiful in bouquets. They bloom alongside things like tulips and even daffodils. So they would make a really pretty combination in a cut arrangement. So here is that hydrangea, the macrophylla type that we talked about. And this variety is the Nico Blue, which is a very traditional variety, uh, very common. They get quite big. And these here, in order to get blue hydrangeas, you need to have acidic soil. So if your soil is more acidic, they'll lean blue. If you have more alkaline soil, they will lean more purple or pink. So that is the color mystery with this variety of hydrangea. And these are $6.97 for one root and some trumpet vine, which I would caution you against because I have heard that this can be a little bit invasive, but it all depends on where you're located as to whether or not a plant is considered invasive. So something to keep in mind, but you get one root for $6.97. So Talking about invasive plants, wisteria is another one that you wanna be cautious of. There is a type, maybe it's called amethyst falls that here in the US might not be invasive, but this one here is just called purple wisteria sinensis. So something to be aware of. It is very beautiful and very fragrant, so it can be tempting. But I would do a little bit of research before picking something like that up. And you get one root for $6.97. And another quintessential spring blooming shrub, the forsythia. And this is a very common variety called Linwood Gold. These are another plant that make a great option for hedging um, and for privacy between properties. When they're in bloom, they'll make a really impactful um, wall of yellow blooms. The pollinators also love these and you're getting one root for $6.97. They get quite large, 10 to 12 feet tall and wide. So give them some space. A couple more varieties of hollyhocks. You have hollyhock black. Those are stunning. Look at that. Three roots for two, um, two roots for 324. The same with the hollyhocks red, getting two roots for 324. They ha also have this really buttery, pretty yellow. Look how fluffy these blooms are. They're gorgeous. And there is also a pink variety. So lots of hollyhock options here at Walmart. Gladiolus, and you're getting eight bulbs for 324. This looks like a mixed variety. Some really pretty bright colors. These also get pretty tall and require some staking. So if you plant them up against a fence, um, that usually helps support them a bit. 
50 to 60 inches in height, so anywhere from four to five feet tall. They make great cut flowers. They're deer resistant. They don't touch them in my garden. And I actually have left these in the ground even though they're considered annual here in my zone six and they've returned for me. So you just never know what will make it and what won't. It's all a bunch of experiments that are fun to try, right? And here is my very favorite herbaceous peony and it is the Sarah Bernhardt. So that one's sorbet, but it's also a light pink, but this is the Sarah Bernhardt right here. This is gorgeous. The blooms are so fluffy. They actually look like an English rose. They are so fragrant and I just love this light pink color. They make a stunning arrangement. So you put a handful of these in a vase and it just looks like a gorgeous ball of fluffiness that smells amazing. Uh, so this is the Sarah Bernhardt. It gets, let's see how tall they get, 36 inches, 32 to 36 inches in height and in width, and they need 24 to 48 inch spacing. Bare root is a great way to start a peony collection. Very affordable. Even if it takes a couple of years to get blooms, I think that it's worth it. All of my peonies in my garden were started from bare root with the exception of one. And this one here is called Sorbet, which I also have, and it's another light pink fluffy variety. You can see the growth habit is a little bit different. Some more lily options. Here you have an orange one called Durango, and this pretty one here, which is called Forever Susan. I have a gardener friend who has these in her garden, and they are stunning. They have like this burgundy with a little bit of orange. This two-tone effect just makes them look really pretty. And this pink oriental mix. I have quite a bit of these. The oriental pink mix and the stargazer in my garden. They're very fragrant. I have them planted in the back of a border. And uh, because they're taller, they get to be about four feet in height. Let's see, 30 to 48 inches in height. And they bloom in the summer. Now these I do have to spray for deer because they do like to eat the buds. Anything that is a lily, they love to go after. It's like deer candy. So something to keep in mind. And some more flocks. These are smaller packages. You get three roots for $5.42 and it is a mix. And here's another pretty flox. It's called Orange Perfection. I don't think I've ever seen orange phlox. But if you like warmer colors in your garden, this would be a pretty one to add. Look at that. Plant in full sun to partial shade, blooms in the summer. Let's see how tall this variety gets. 24 to 36 inches in height. Here is a smaller package of the Rudbeckia or Black Eyed Susan Goldstrom variety. You get two roots for 542. So these smaller packages are great because they're affordable. And in a couple of years, you'll be able to divide these and have a bunch more plants. So you can start with something small like this. And some Triceratus. These are a shade plant, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it says plant in partial to full shade. I've never grown them before, but I think they're really interesting. Now you see how this bloom looks really large here? This is actually magnified. From what I understand, these are pretty small, but they're very pretty and have a lot of interest with all of those um, speckling and different colors. Get two roots for 542 and they get to be 18 to 24 inches in height. And it looks like they have a strappy green foliage, similar to say like an iris. Right. And that variety is called Blue Wonder. And then they have this one here, which is called Herda. See that? They're wild looking, very tropical looking. Two roots for 542, blooms late summer. And here's another plant that has the potential to be invasive under the right growing conditions. It grows very, very well um, in some places. It is Lily of the Valley and they have the pink variety and the white. These like a moist, well-draining soil, but they're adaptable. So they can even grow in a dry or a clay type soil. They have a strappy foliage at the bottom and they are topped with these little bell-shaped flowers that kind of arch over. They're very similar looking to say like a snowdrop. And here you're getting five roots for 542. They are pretty short, so they make um, sort of like a ground cover at only eight to 10 inches in height. And they like to be planted in partial to full shade. Fragrant blooms, great for borders. Blooms in mid spring. And some clematis, some really pretty varieties. This pink one here is called City of Lion. Clematis HF Young, Venosa Violcia, I believe that one is called really pretty varieties. Now the clematis is a climbing vine. They're beautiful. They bloom also at different times. So there's early season, mid season, and late season. There's also different categories for pruning. So there is a category um, one, two, three. So you need to know what type of clematis you're growing so that you know how to prune them appropriately and not risk lopping off any of your season's blooms. But here we have a clematis city of lion. Let's see how tall this one gets because they also grow to different heights. So this one gets to be eight to 12 feet really pretty on a trellis or climbing up, up and over something, um, a pergola and so forth. So 542 for one root. 
this HF Young variety I've heard of before, so it seems like it might be a popular one. And this one gets to be six to nine feet in height. These look really pretty mixed in with something like a climbing rose because they can bloom at different times. So you always have something blooming on your um, trellis or your pergola or wherever it is that you have these trained to grow up. So this one here, let's see, it's also one root for 542 and they get to be nine to 12 feet in height. Really pretty. And bearded iris, I have quite a collection of bearded iris. They're stunning. This one here, you're getting one rhizome. These look a bit dehydrated, but you can plant them out and then they'll start, you know, go, they'll rehydrate and then they'll start sending up some new shoots. This one here is called Cherub's Smile. Iris also have early season, mid and late season, and there are also some that are reblooming. So they like full sun, a well-draining soil. This variety gets to be 36 to 48 inches. They're prolific growers. And as soon as they start getting too large, you would divide your clump and um, that will keep the blooms coming and then you can share them with friends they have a couple of varieties of bearded iris this one here is called full tide looks like it's going to be more of a blue color which is probably more of a lavender but still really pretty another variety of iris this is called caesar's brother and it's a siberian type iris i have this one in my garden it has really pretty strappy green foliage so even when not in bloom it will look like you have a clump of ornamental grass it gets to be 24 to 36 inches in height it likes full sun and this one blooms in late spring and what I like to call deer salad in my garden, hosta. Another really beautiful foliage plant for a shade garden because they come in so many different colors and leaf shapes and sizes, they offer a lot of interest to a shade garden just in the way of their foliage. But if you do deal with deer like I do, you would have to protect these. Either put them in a fenced in area if possible or spray them regularly to keep them away. So here you're getting two roots for 542. This is a very, very popular variety, the Patriot Hosta. It's green in the center with the white um, outer margins or borders and then you have this one here which is called olive bailey langdon i actually grew this one from bare root that i purchased here last year and the first year from bare root they're quite small but they will get bigger each year after that these grow pretty fast and they also send up bloom stalks that are little um, lavender or white shaped bell flowers that the pollinators absolutely love the hummingbirds the bees and so let's see how big this variety gets the uh, Olive Langdon Bailey here, Olive Bailey Langdon gets to be 18 to 36 inches in height. Really easy to plant out from bare root. And these you don't have to wait until your last frost. They're pretty hardy. So you can go ahead, as long as your soil is thawed and workable, you can go ahead and plant these hosta bare roots if you get a nice day of weather. And this variety is called Minutemen. Also looks very similar to the Patriot Hosta where it's green in the center with the creamy white outer margins here. And this one gets to be 20, 12 to 24 inches in height. If you enjoy daylilies, they have a couple more varieties. They have this blackberries and cream. The final touch, which I did grow in my garden, the little missy. And there's also a once in a lifetime, which looks like it's a mixed variety. And all of these you're getting, so this one here, the mix, you get three roots for 542. And those here, you're getting two roots for 542. It's another beautiful canna and this one is called crimson beauty but it looks like it is a type of salmon color or coral with some green foliage it's a pretty one and here's one um, here's a canna called lucifer that looks like it's red with yellow so a couple more varieties and some more dahlias also i've actually grown this variety in the past the cream de cassis it is stunning this is what they call the water lily type dahlia and it is a light pink in the front with a deeper burgundy type pink in the back of the leaf of the petal stunning and they're not too big they get to be 36 to 48 inches mine stood more at the three foot level and you can see here there's a bunch of growth coming out on that one so it looks like it's a good tuber and these are prolific producers you get tons and tons of blooms on these and because the bloom is not too large they're perfect for arranging with Cream de Cassis. this dahlia also looks really pretty it's called zingaro it looks like it's a light pink with some yellow I get two tubers for 542 and it gets 24 to 36 inches in height so not too tall and here's a stunning gladiola espresso look at that beautiful deep color this would look beautiful in floral arrangements 16 bulbs for 542 a couple more pretty dahlias this one is called pacific ocean dahlia it kind of looks like it would be a smaller type dahlia 24 to 32 inches in height looks like the bloom would be a bit daintier might be great for a container or even the front or second row of a border. Called Pacific Time. And this one gets 24 to 32 inches in height. 
two tubers for $5.42. And then this pretty one too. Look at this one, Twinnings Smarty. It looks like it's uh, alternating colors on the petals. That is so interesting. That's a cool one to try, right? $5.42 for two tubers, Twinnings Smarty. Plant in full sun, bloom summer through fall. Vibrant color, excellent for cut flowers. We have a calla lily mix, look at that. In Portuguese, they call these canacas, and these come in different colors as well, and they're annuals here in our zone, but if you plant them in a microclimate, they can come back for you without having to lift them. And a microclimate is something that stay a spot in your garden that stays warmer. So somewhere along the foundation of your house, um, in a corner that doesn't get too much wind and that stays um, warm from the sun. These get to be 18 to 24 inches in height and they have, it looks like a speckled foliage with these blooms. If you also enjoy growing vegetables from bare root or from seed, they have a few options here, seed potatoes and onion sets. Um, so let's go ahead and check these out. Some straw strawberries and a vegetable that is perennial asparagus. So if you have a spot in your garden and you want a vegetable that comes back year after year and you like asparagus, this is a great option. They can be expensive to get at the grocery store. The only thing is that when you start asparagus, it's a commitment because it will take up to three years before you get any um, significant asparagus to harvest from it. Um, but they also send up these really pretty ferny type foliage that is really interesting. So even when the plant is just getting going, you get to enjoy that. And so this variety here, here is the asparagus jersey giant you get three roots for 324 and then they also have the asparagus mary washington and with this variety you get four roots for 324 they like to be planted in full sun and it says harvest in spring so great perennial vegetable anytime you plant something once and it comes back year after year it's worth your time investment right and some onion sets so onion sets are, you can grow onions from seed or you can grow them from sets. Now the, the sets are, someone has already grown the seeds and grown them to this point so that now you can plant them in your garden and get a little bit of a head start. And this is a variety of yellow onion. It says to plant it in full sun, harvest mid-season. You get 100 bulbs for 324. There's also some garlic. Now, typically here in my zone six, garlic is planted in the fall and then harvested in the summer. So planted somewhere between October and November and harvested at some point in, um, say, July. So I'm not really sure how this would work here in my zone, but it could be that you know more than me about growing gar uh, garlic. I'm pretty new at it. So it's possible that those will grow from seed garlic at this point too. Let's see, this here is Onion Sets Harvest Blend. So this is a mixed variety of onions. You get 100 for $3.24. And then they also have some seed potatoes. Now seed potatoes, you can also um, make your own. If you buy potatoes, they would just have to be organic because most potatoes are sprayed with some type of preservative so that they don't sprout too early in transit into the grocery store. But if you have organic potatoes, you can just let them start getting those eyes, plant those out, and those can be your seed potatoes. But if you don't have that option, you can also buy some. Here is a white potato. You get five seed potatoes. You can also cut these in half and double it, so you would have 10. And you get five tubers for 324. So you get five tubers for 324 of the red as well, and this is a popular red variety called Red Norland. And some strawberries. Strawberries is another perennial fruit. These have a tendency to get carried away. They do send out runners, so you can end up with quite a few after a couple of years. You get 10 bare roots for 324. There's also a couple of different varieties of strawberries. There is ever bearing, which will fruit for you throughout the season. And there are June bearing varieties, which will set all of their fruit on you know, around the month of June. So this variety Quinault says it is ever bearing. So it's great that they've actually outlined that for you because when I looked over at Lowe's and Home Depot, they hadn't mentioned if it was ever bearing or June bearing. You would have to know the variety and Google it to find out. But this one is the Quinault, an ever bearing. And then right on the side, they have a variety that is called June bearing. And this one here is the all-star strawberry. Oh, look how big and juicy those look. You get 10 strawberry roots for 324. First they flower and then they set fruit. More potato varieties. This one is called Gold Rush. You get five tuber potatoes for 324. And then some more onions. We looked at those already. They're the yellow onions. And is this the same potato? This one's a Yukon Gold. So here is another variety of seed potato. Two more varieties of the onions. There is Onion Sets White, 100 bulbs for 324, and Onion Sets Red, 
100 bulbs for 324 as well. And that's what those look like. Cute little tiny onions that you will plant and then they will grow on to be larger onions. Onions do like a lot of fertilizer. So in order to get nice big onions, you need loose, fertile soil. Some fruit bare root starts. You have some berries here and some grapes. It looks like you're getting two. So it's called edible garden. So you get two varieties in one package or two bare roots for $11.47. This one here is a grape collection. It looks like you get Reliance and Niagara. And then this one here, you get Niagara and Concord, and it'll tell you if it's a seedless variety or not. Then you have some blueberries. Blueberries also make a great ornamental shrub because they flower and the foliage gets red in the fall. So it would be a great plant that bears fruit that you could also integrate into your decorative or your ornamental garden. And blueberries take about three years before you get any significant harvest. And of course, if you have more than one, it will help increase your yields. Um, the birds love to eat the blueberries though, so you might have to protect them with some netting once they start, after they flower and begin to set fruit to make sure that you will get to enjoy a few blueberries. So the varieties they have here are Patriot and Blue Ray, and there's also Misty and Legacy. So quite a few options to choose from. Some more berry collections here. We have some raspberry collection. You get Jewel and Purple Royalty. And here are some blackberry raspberry combos. And this one here um, is just, it doesn't say the variety, it just says blackberry and raspberry. So these are fun. I've never seen these before with the two roots. And then here we have some strawberry sets. So there is a red Eversweet and a white Carolina in that box. You also have a set here that comes with both the Nico Blue Macrophylla Hydrangea and the PG Paniculata type Hydrangea, the PG Pink. And there you get $11.47 for two bare root shrubs. And here are a couple more. You get Brandywine and Amity for raspberries. So these are some great options here. They also have the single packs of the grapes here and some blackberries and raspberries. And the varieties are, uh, for grapes, they have the seedless Candace, the seedless Concord. They also have a blueberry Blue Ray, the grape, which is a white grape here, seedless Marquis. And then at the bottom here, they have, let's see, a blackberry, Quachita and Ebony King and then they have Raspberry Heritage. And these are all a single bare root for $6.97. Well, that brings us to the end of the March inventory here at Walmart. I hope that you've enjoyed checking out all of the bare root summer flowering shrubs and flowers that they have here in stock at my store. And I hope that you can find some of these near you. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button. Also, have you subscribed yet? It's completely free. When you hit the subscribe button, it lets YouTube know that you enjoy my videos so that the next time you come to YouTube, it will recommend some of my videos that you haven't seen before. On my channel, I have a variety of videos from planting to garden tours and even some shopping for plants and all things gardening related. I hope that you'll subscribe and become part of the Hooked and Rooted community. Let's grow together.